Hey everyone, it's Franz from MedMastery. Today I will cover a very important topic for you. And the topic is combination of antiplatelet therapy with anticoagulation. So imagine you have a patient with atrial fibrillation or mechanical valve who is on anticoagulation, right? And they need a stent. What do you do? Do you give them clopidogrel, aspirin plus anticoagulation? Or do you leave out aspirin or clopidogrel? What do you do? So the study that I'm going to sum up for you today was published in 2013 by De Wilde et al. in The Lancet. And I think it will solve that mystery for you. So check it out. The trial's title is Use of Clopidogrel with or without aspirin in patients taking oral anticoagulant therapy and undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention, an open-label randomized controlled trial. The included patients had to meet three criteria. They had to have a long-term indication for anticoagulation therapy with a vitamin K antagonist. They had to have a severe coronary stenosis of at least 75%, and they had to have an indication for percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI. These patients were then randomized into one of two groups. The double therapy group received a combination of clopidogrel and anticoagulation, the triple therapy group received a combination of aspirin, clopidogrel, and anticoagulation. Let's go back to the title of the study real quick. The subtitle says, an open-label randomized controlled trial. Now, you probably know what randomized control means, but what about open-label? What does that mean? Well, that basically means that the dual therapy group did not get a placebo tablet instead of aspirin. So everyone involved, including the treating physician and the patient, knew which group they were in. That's all it means. De Wilde and co-workers randomized 573 patients. 284 were assigned to the double therapy group and 289 were assigned to the triple therapy group. Seven patients randomized to the double therapy group had to be excluded and six patients in the triple therapy group had to be excluded due to various reasons. So they ended up with 279 patients in the double therapy group and 284 in the triple therapy group. All of these patients had received anticoagulation before stent implantation or PCI. After PCI, they were given a combination of anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy, which was either dual or triple therapy. Most patients received drug-loading stents, but there were also some patients with bare metal stents. In all of these patients, stable angina was the indication for stent implantation. Patients with bare metal stents received anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy somewhere between 1 month and 12 months. That was left to the discretion of the treating physician. Patients in the drug-loading stent group received anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy for a total of 12 months. The double and triple therapy groups were similar at baseline with respect to various variables like age, gender, comorbidities, and drug therapy. Indications for anticoagulation in the study's patients were as follows. 70% had atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. 10% had mechanical valves and 20% received it for other reasons like pulmonary embolism, apical aneurysms, etc. The study's primary outcome was any bleeding during the 12-month study period. The secondary outcome was a combination of the following events. Death, myocardial infarction, stroke, revascularization, or stent thrombosis. And here are the results. Let's have a look at the primary outcome of bleeding first. So any bleeding occurred in 19.4% of patients in the double therapy group and in 44.4% of patients in the triple therapy group. The associated hazard ratio, which compares the rates in the double therapy group to those in the triple therapy group, was 0.36. You can see that the confidence intervals do not cross the value of 1, which means that this result is statistically significant. What about blood transfusions? 3.9% of patients in the double therapy group received blood transfusions in the 12-month period following stent implantation versus 9.5% in the triple therapy group. The hazard ratio was 0.39, and again, this was statistically significant. Multiple bleeding occurred in 6 patients in the double therapy group versus 34 patients in the triple therapy group, so 2.2 versus 12%. 
So overall, the double therapy group looks much better when it comes to bleeding as compared to the triple therapy group. That was kind of expected, right? But what about the ischemic events and mortality overall? That was assessed in the study's secondary event, or secondary outcome. And here are the results for that. All-cause mortality had a hazard ratio of 0.39. You see that the confidence intervals do not cross the value of 1, so it's statistically significant. This means that all-cause mortality was less likely in the double therapy group. Cardiac mortality hazard ratio of 0.43, not significant. PCI or cabbage, 1.05, not significant. Any type of stroke, 0.37, not significant. Stent thrombosis, 0.44, also not significant. Now, what happens if you take all of these outcomes together? If you do that, you'll arrive at a hazard ratio of 0.6, which is now statistically significant. And this means that the secondary endpoint of all of these outcomes combined is 40% less likely in the double therapy group. Now, how can the individual outcomes be mostly not significant and the combination be significant? Well, because the statistical power increases with more events, which you can clearly see by looking at the confidence interval for the combined outcome. It's much narrower than that of the individual outcomes. So, I hope you found this interesting. What the data implies is that you can safely omit aspirin from your treatment regimen in these patients. I'd be super interested to know what you do in your patients. Also, if you haven't done so, please visit us at memmastery.com where you will find even more great teaching videos, online courses, and interviews. So stay tuned for more to come, and I'll talk to you later.